Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings, and gosh darn it, there's so much news happening right now, it's hard to keep up with, but in this video, we're going to try to give you the most important things that are happening right now, and that's why in this video, we are going to be talking about the latest with Israel, the House of Saad, salacious push for war with Iran, the new accused sexual abuser of the day with photos, mass online censorship of political ideas, and of course, the elimination and future enslavement of human society through technocratic economic warfare by companies like Amazon. Plus, a lot more. But first, let's start off with the latest geopolitical news. As a top Turkish parliament member came out today and warned the United States that Syria will become its second Vietnam, saying that the United States is trying to reshape the borders of the countries that were created after the First World War based on its own interests. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up right now is just minutes ago, Donald Trump tweeted and reinvigorated another push by the UN Security Council to once again go after Syrian President Bashar al-Assad and investigate him for committing war crimes. The United States is still playing an integral part in the Syrian civil war. According to U.S. generals, there's thousands of U.S. troops there right now, a conflict that they've been engaged in ever since it started, and now even admittedly through Amnesty International confirms how the U.S. and its ally Israel gave ISIS and other radical Islamic terrorist groups one billion dollars of weapons, something we've been saying since the beginning of this civil war, but yet still hasn't reached mainstream media traction for some reason. And you would think funds raised through our taxes given to ISIS Islamic terrorists that now create more terrorism in the West would be a major news story, but for some reason it's still being ignored. And even with that, ISIS is still losing in Syria, and with that conflict almost over, there's another one brewing. With the push being made by mainly US allies Saudi Arabia and Israel, who are working together trying to engage, of course, Hezbollah in Lebanon and its Iranian links, an important factor that the mainstream media ignores, especially with the factors that Israel, America, America's strongest ally is ultimately getting ready for a major war. And if it wasn't clear for you enough, we now have the Israeli military chief coming out and backing cooperation against Iran with Saudi Arabia, where Israel is now even ready to share intelligence with Saudi Arabia against Iran ahead of a conflict that both works out in their greater geopolitical aspirations. And of course, there's a lot of tough talk coming from Israel, with their prime minister just coming out vowing that they will act alone against Iran if given no other option. Now, of course, that won't happen without the United States and Saudi Arabia's help. Obviously, since Saudi Arabia is issuing similar statements, with their foreign minister coming out today, sending a message to Iran saying enough is enough. Now, of course, there is a lot of fear mongering about this doom and gloom and upcoming war. But I do have to say there are a lot of economic factors that do contribute to people believing that this is not only going to be a war of words, especially with Saudi Arabia being strapped for cash and having a very very dismal economic futures outlook and the consequences of this greater potential war with Iran, Saudi Arabia, Israel, Hezbollah, Lebanon are of course very grand and should be taken very seriously. With some economic experts predicting that this would cause oil to rise to $300 per barrel and it would further impoverish the world. The toll on humanity would be grand with of course Saudi Arabia not having any priority for human rights as they just bombed another major airport in Yemen preventing more humanitarian relief going to that country as millions of people are already suffering and on the brink of death because of the proxy war that Saudi Arabia is involved in in Yemen right now supporting their previous government, the Sunni leadership and Al-Qaeda against the Iranian Houthi rebels. So the war between these two countries is already there in the proxy war of Yemen and of course could expand to have a bigger global impact. With oil looking like it won't be the future for many Middle Eastern countries, we could only expect the Middle East to become more turbulent, more unpredictable, and something that soon will reach out and affect all of us. And for some reason, we're hearing very little about this on the mainstream media. But what we are hearing a lot about is, of course, some creepy dudes diddling some women, which is an important issue, but I think is definitely not being covered fairly at all. And one of the biggest revelations we found out through this diddling scandal that's happening in Hollywood and Washington, D.C. right now, and pretty much any upper echelons of society, is this statue in the U.S. government that needs to end immediately and has taxpayers bailing out sexual predators to the tune of $15 million within just the last decade to settle and silence sexual abuse victims of 
Congress members. These sick, degenerate plutocrats are literally getting a bailout and with our money are using to silence their victims so no one hears about their indiscretions and illegal activities. Using similar practices as seen by Harvey Weinstein and Jeffrey Epstein, by the way, who just threw a large sum of money legally make their victims sign contracts, pay them off, silence them so no one ever hears or knows about the true individuals that they are. An outright travesty to any justice, civility, and humanity. And when sexually harassing your aides and other employees in Washington, D.C. is not enough, we of course have the latest accusations against U.S. Senator Al Franken, where today a former Playboy model and broadcaster came out and accused him of kissing and groping her without consent, publishing this photo on social media and telling it all against the U.S. Senator. And in a bizarre twist, he actually admitted to it and is now calling for an ethics investigation on himself, which definitely definitely should make for a very interesting uh, investigation. And of course, the stories keep coming in from Washington, D.C. and Hollywood, as we're now learning that there's 20 more claims of inappropriate behavior against Kevin Spacey that took place over a decade at the Old Vic Theater. Sylvester Stallone is also being accused at the very moment of shooting this video. And again, just like we keep saying, this is only the beginning. We're seeing a lot of people trying to use these latest scandals politically, which of course is muddying the waters for everyone during this serious time. And while all the facts are still coming out about all of these cases, it's important to note that yes, there is a serious problem, probably a lot bigger one than we know of, especially with a lot of the mainstream media suppressing the bigger pedophile stories that have been happening. But the issues here shouldn't be about left and right, it should be about right and wrong, and not using a lot of these victims for political brownie points. But hey, that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And now moving forward to other news, if you didn't know this, Twitter sucks and is being used as a political tool to try to censor and silence some of the voices of what people consider people on the right or far right. As Twitter just banned right-wing personality Baked Alaska and got rid of verification signs, taking away some of their privileges from right-wing personalities like Tommy Robinson. Now, personally, I do believe that there are a lot of dumb personalities on the left and right that I completely disagree with. But now, Twitter trying to be the political police and censoring one side is even dumber. And should be a reminder to everyone what we've been saying for years is that these big mega technocratic companies cannot be trusted. They are not bastions of free speech. They are private corporations with political agendas that are only becoming more powerful and influential because of our compliance with them. And it's not just Twitter that sucks, it's also Facebook that just recently banned an account for posting an article with sources that were talking about false flag operations. Not any conspiracy theories, but admitted false flags like Operation Gladio, the Gulf of Tonkin, and other historically accurate false flag events, which for some reason Facebook has deemed too inappropriate for you to view and even understand. And we have to understand these big online tech companies not only pose a threat to free speech, but most importantly, almost everything else. As this article points out, especially with the development of quantum computing and AI, as this article points out, that artificial intelligence will, of course, serve humans, but of course, only the 1% of them, highlighting a very serious issue facing the rest of humanity, because only the very powerful will have these latest technological advancements, which, of course, shouldn't be a surprise to you, will mainly be used against you for the benefit of the few people who own them. And I'm not trying to be sensational here, but I do see this as a very serious threat that a lot of people are not seeing coming at them. For example, look at Amazon that now has 45,000 robots working for them that are replacing the human labor force, only enriching themselves and the very few, while at the same time, the government allows it to happen by subsidizing these companies, not only giving them tax incentives, but also government grants, which pretty much takes our money and pays for our future economic enslavement. While local governments literally fight for Amazon to be located in their cities, where mainly robots will work and not human labor, by trying to entice them with just straight grant money 
or the incentives of not paying any tax. Creating products that, of course, other governments buy for them, like right now, where Amazon is selling its cloud business to China for up to $301 million. And with all that extra government cash, they're able to cut down prices of products that we need for our everyday life, like food. As Amazon just slashed Whole Foods prices in round two of their grocer wars, this is right just after Amazon bought Whole Foods, and while destroying independent competitors against them who don't have all the government money that they were given, they of course will use automation and be able to fire thousands of grocery store cashiers with of course their latest machines, while using privacy violating technologies like biometrics, creating a dependent control grid surveillance society, while working hand in hand with not only the Chinese government, the CIA, but also now the Pentagon, which is set to approve an Amazon deal that will give them $53 billion to supply the Pentagon with all of its needs. And with Amazon giving you the cheapest products, making shopping convenient for you, we all need to be slapped upside the head and realize that Amazon is a serious threat to not only our freedom, but also the free markets. And we have to understand a lot of the major power brokers like Jeff Bezos of Amazon and the political structures colluding with them will never warn you about the true dangers that they pose to our future society. And sadly, we may only realize the true problems that we are facing when it will be already too late to reverse the situation that we're in. And it already may be too late, as major investors are saying that Amazon stock should be the world's most valuable company, with huge, vast amount of wealth already being gobbled up by Jeff Bezos and other technocrats, and recent reports showing that how about 50% of global household wealth is now currently controlled by just 0.7% of the planet's population, and that only 36 million individuals own $128.7 trillion in the world, leaving, of course, a dwindling middle class and a staggering gap between the super rich and the super poor. And I wanted to end this story with a quote by Frank Zappa that said that the illusion of freedom will continue as long as it's profitable to continue the illusion. At the point where the illusion becomes too expensive to maintain, they will just take down the scenery, they will pull back the curtains, they will move the tables and chairs out of the way, and you will see the brick wall at the back of the theater. And I believe we are very close to that time, unless all of us wake up to this monster monolithic mega corporation that could very well usher in an Orwellian technocrat state as we're literally seeing it being built all around us but the only thing standing in its way is our compliance and if we stop using Amazon if we stop using Twitter if we stop using Facebook if we stop enabling and empowering these technocrats there's no way they would be able to continue without our compliance now will that ever happen um <sighs> I hope so. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now if I didn't believe in it. I'm usually more optimistic and sure, yeah, that will happen. Because ultimately, on a very basic, simple hippie level, our thoughts create our own reality. If you know anyone who is not privy to this information and should hear this message, please share this video with them. Major thanks to all the individuals who donate $5 a month to wearechange.org to keep us fully free and independent. And most importantly, even though there's a lot of obstacles in our way, it's going to be okay. I think so. I hope so. It will be. I love you guys. Thank you again so much for watching.